My favorite trip was Thailand. Really? Why? Thailand. Love animals. And Thailand, we did, um, we mud bathed with elephants. Um, that was beyond amazing. Uh, we also went to like a big cat sanctuary. So um, we got to see some like tigers and some like baby tigers. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and then also um, the marine life out there is, is, is pretty extensive as well. Um, so when we went, like we went on a, like a island hopping tour, um, and we went to this place called Monkey Island, and then you just see like the monkeys like swinging off the rocks and the trees. It was like. Like I pulled you out of hat, pull you out of bag from out of mag if you want that. Pull up in the slab and pull off with you in my lap. Top down with the Travel Tuesday happy hour where we interview dope people doing dope things from around the world. As y'all can see, my beautiful queen is still here with me. Tell them <laughs> who you are. Hey everybody, I'm Jackie. I am Paige's fiance and his co-host for Travel Tuesday season three, Couples Goals. Okay, okay. And we have an amazing, amazing guests, right? They, these two power couple, they may not tell y'all this, but you know, I'm going to tell y'all they're a power couple. <laughs> so tell us who you guys are and what do y'all do? Okay. Um, so I'm Jasmine, everyone. I am originally from Philadelphia. Um, right currently, we live in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Um, I actually have a, a few different... Um, I guess you can say tricks up my sleeve. So I'm currently a travel agent. Um, I also work in HR and recruitment. Um, so um, I do a little bit of uh, high school to college recruitment. Um, and then I also um, do a lot of like nonprofiting. So I work with um, some reparations for um, some nonprofits that work with um, the National Coalition of Blacks for Reparations of Philadelphia and mm. Free African Society and, and some other various organizations. And then lastly, I'm a Girl Scout leader. Um, so yeah, just a little bit about me. Nice. Awesome, awesome. Well put, baby. Um, <laughs> hi, hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> here. Um, Philadelphia, born and raised. Uh, lived in Mount Airy most of my life. Um, Traveled all around the city um, and currently work in finance. Um, been doing that for quite some time. Uh, yeah. For the most part, my hobbies really include hanging out with some friends, just, you know, kicking it I like the late, I'm real laid back, <laughs> just okay. small intimate okay. gatherings and whatnot. And um, yeah, sitting here with my, my best friend and my partner. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So how did y'all meet? Um, we met in high school, um, but we actually didn't start dating until <laughs> until his last semester, wow. I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, in college. So, <laughs> yes. Where'd y'all go to school? We went to high school engineering and science down in Temple area, North Philly. And um, as you mentioned, we was just friends, cordial there. And um, we wind up going to Indiana University, PA, IUP. IUP um, party, go ahead. <laughs> exactly. Kill the love, kill the love. Kill the love. Kill the love. over Brook alum. So, you know, that West Philly, that West Philly vibe is there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah, it was at one of those parties we met, started hanging out, started kicking it, and it's been history ever since. Oh, man, that's super dope. That's super dope. So, like, can y'all remember? Who made the first move? To... Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> she did? Jasmine, it was you? Yeah, it was definitely me. So, um, like I said, we went to high school, we went to college together, and um, he was posted up outside of a party and I was thinking to myself, like, I never really seen him like in the mix. Like I never really seen him like, you know, messing with girls, you know what I mean? So I was like, hmm, let me see, you know, what's up? So I went for it and, you know, we kind of, um, we actually, uh, we smoke obviously, but, um, I was like, Hey, do you smoke? He's like, 
Yeah, I smoked. So I was like, all right, come on, let's smoke. And then that, we started smoking. Um, he took me out on a date to the bar, which is a typical college date. It was it was really nice, though. I really appreciated it. Um, it was my first college date since I've been in college. So um, it was really nice. Uh, listen, Philly girls are built different. Uh, I'm just saying, she <laughs> Philly girls are built different. Anywhere else, she would have looked at you the whole time. and like, all right, if he ain't going to come talk to me, it's just going to be a wrap for him. So you lucky you got you a Philly girl because she ain't waiting for you to come around and figure out what you want to do with yourself. Plus, I mean, IUP is IUP is pretty dope, right? In this, in its sense that it's Philly, New York, Baltimore, DC. Um, it's a conglomerate of color, like of folks like us, and you don't realize like college is kind of sometimes the the. Uh, the common denominator in like, like having our experiences. Right? right. And so like, I ain't got a lot of you. I had a good time at IUP whenever we visited. So, so IUP <laughs> holds a close place in my heart. Um, and so, yeah. So as she stated, that's, that's how you shot your shot. Do you mm-hmm. remember the like first trip y'all took together as a couple or were you one of those, like before she was my girl, I got to show her how I move. So we went to like Miami or something like that together. Nah, nah. For me, traveling was never really a big thing. I would do maybe out of state trips, go down to Virginia, um, go got some family property down there. It's real laid back, different, different vibes from Philly. Um, for the most part, go over to California, right? I was doing just small trips. Mm-hmm. Um, our first trip together was Thailand. Um, so our oh, first oh. trip together was actually Atlanta. Uh, we went to Atlanta you, together. Okay. For, oh, thank you. Um, and he probably doesn't think like that because we don't count in the country trips. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. Not anymore. Point. Huh? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like we at the point where it's like in the country trips, they don't even really count. So especially places that we can drive to, right? Like we consider those like, you know, we don't cause like New York, I mean, Delaware, Maryland, like most of those places, we don't really consider those trips, but our first flight together. So our actually our first trip was to Atlanta and we, um, I remember only because I had got a, a buddy pass from my girlfriend. I think she was working for Delta at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, on the way there, um, you know, a buddy pass is actually standby. So it's really whatever seat um, they have available on the plane. Come mm-hmm. to find out they only had two seats available in first class. So we had to hurry up, run to the bathroom, um, look in our carry on to see if we had any clothes change our clothes, run back to the gate um, before, you know, they started boarding and everything. And then on the way back, um, it was kind of similar, except he sat in economy and I sat in first class because it was only one seat and one seat. Um, And I got tore up. I mean, I (laughs) didn't realize that, um, you know, three or four drinks in the sky is not always the best. But yes, it was it was a lot of fun. It's, uh, it was me on Wait, I, and for, forgive me because I'm not a frequent first class traveler, but there's a dress code for first class. Yes. Yeah, yes. So some, so, if you look like so, us. So, <laughs> some, I think it's some airlines, actually. Like, I think it depends on the airline because, for example, like I just flew Frontier and I don't remember flying Frontier before. I think I had flown Frontier before, but their first class isn't even really separated. Like, you can't even really tell that it's like a first class versus like like an economy or business class, but some that are really like separated. And then too, a lot of people's first class is considered business. So a lot of people are traveling mm. on business. They want you to dress appropriate for business. So um, that's also. So at that, that flight you took, it was a Delta. You think it was a Delta flight. I think it was. And there was, what was, flight. what was yeah. the dress code? Um, They just said casual, like we couldn't yeah. wear um tight. When we first went on, or she had pants. she had tights on, and I was wearing okay. sweatpants because yeah. that's how we normally travel through the airport. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when we got to the uh, to the boarding gate, the gate agent turned us around, 
So as Jazz said, luckily we had those clothes, just spare clothes on hand in our carry-on. And we did a quick change like Superman <laughs> in the phone booth coming in and out. Yes. Yeah. Um, a really quick change. It was just into another polo or something a little a bit more casual. Yeah. Business okay. Casual. okay. 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 Oh wow. Okay. okay. That's okay. interesting. So- so for this trip, like who was the master planner and who was just like, just tell me how much and we're ready to go. <laughs> the Atlanta trip was actually uh, my a surprise birthday gift. So mm-hmm. Jazz did all of the planning and she was like, hey, come on, let's just go. Let's go somewhere. Nice. Um, so that was awesome. Um, for the most part, Jazz is the more rambunctious one, ready to go. So she'll always drop me little hints like, hey, let's look at these flights or hey, let's look, check this destination out. Uh-huh. And then I'll be like, OK, let's let's check it out. Let's, let's see what's going on. Right. That's how a lot okay. of our trips uh, boiled out. OK, so let's talk about this Thailand trip. Like, let's talk about mm-hmm. that. Like, uh, who planned that out? What was that about? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think we we both planned Thailand um, mm-hmm. a little bit because at the time um, we were um, we were both early in our careers making a lot of money. We were like we want to you know we want to just go all out, go to Asia. We found these flights for I think they were like three hundred and something dollars oh, out wow. of JFK, yeah. out of JFK, and, and we we're like you know what we just we just gonna rock out. Come to find out, after we booked our flights, there were rooms that could have been as cheap as eight dollars a night in Thailand, depending on like where you stay. So um, we didn't want to go to Bangkok because we felt like everybody went to Bangkok, and we were trying to like go somewhere different. Um, so Mike actually found Phuket, which is where we wound up staying, um, and we actually had a twenty-four hour layover in Shanghai. So we spent a day in China, um, which was an that was an experience in itself for just one day, one day. I couldn't imagine staying there for more than one day. It was like a crazy experience. Um, but Thailand was amazing. I think um, the people are really sweet there. Um, the food is excellent. Um, that was my one of my favorite trips because we took a cooking class there. Um, so that was so, so much fun. Um, we got to um, also get a cookbook at the end of the class. So they gave us like, oh, it was a little small one, but a lot of the dishes are able to be prepared under in under 20 minutes. So oh, nice. Yeah. So it was it was really cool. Um, it was a the food is good and it's quick. That's you know, that's all I need. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> nice. Nice. And so, so that was your first trip. What was your favorite trip? Ooh. Oh, well, tell us, tell tell us. The range of trips that you've been on. So like that Thailand was the first international. Atlanta was a domestic joint, but we're still going to count it. <laughs> um, and then so how many other countries or places have you been to? We have been together. I, I had to write it down. <laughs> I honestly, like when you asked that question, um, you know, when originally you had reached out page, I was like, oh, a second. I actually have to think. So, um, I will say Thailand, yeah. Canada. We've been to Mexico a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Two times. We've been to Brazil. Brazil right after. Costa mm-hmm. Rica was our most recent. Yeah. Um, wrapped up in that Costa Rica trip. We also mm-hmm. hopped over to Puerto Rico. Mm-hmm. Um, domestic wise. Several other states. Yeah, I was gonna say several. Another like several the popular states. destinations. Like we haven't been to Miami together. Um, mm-hmm. we haven't been to New Orleans yet. Um, mm-hmm. we're still trying to get around to these on that places. <laughs> um, I've been to California. He's also been to California, but we've been to California separately. Okay. Um, Vegas. I've been to Vegas. He has not. It was a family trip. Um, so yeah, I would say countries. We've probably been to maybe five. Okay. Nice. Nice. And your favorite. And out of those trips that you've mentioned, what's your favorite? What was your favorite? For me, it was Costa Rica, just because of all of the natural beauty and sitting here doing all of the excursions with my partner. We were zip lining, um, whitewater rafting, um, hiking through the jungle. Um, That was like one of our more adventurous trips. 
Yeah. Um, and having my partner right here with me the whole time, sitting here podcast or videotaping each other, it, it was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, same for you, Jasmine. Was that your favorite too? It's hard for me. Um, I absolutely love Costa Rica. Um, absolutely loved it. I I have even talked to him about us getting married there. Actually, so I, I really mm. do love Costa Rica, but. I would actually have to say my favorite trip was Thailand. Really? Why? Thailand. Um, the affordability. Mm-hmm. Um, we we also were able to... Exp- I'm really into animals, so that's something that I didn't say. Um, I'm sure you're going to probably hear my animals at some point. Wait, where are the dogs? Are they outside? There's cat or whatever. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to make sure they're not outside. Just check outside. Make sure they're not um, But yeah, they, um, I love animals. In Thailand, we did, um, we mud bathed with elephants. Um, that was beyond amazing. Uh, we also went to like a big cat sanctuary. So um, we got to see some like tigers and some like baby tigers. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and then also um, the marine life out there is, is, is pretty extensive as well. Um, so when we went, like we went on a, like a island hopping tour um, mm-hmm. and we went to this place called Monkey Island. And then you just see like the monkeys like swinging off the rocks and the tree. It was like a movie. I was like, what is going on? Um, so, yeah, I, I really I think Thailand is probably my favorite. Wow. OK, so oh. you mentioned earlier going to China and just doing that 24 hours like you both your eyes lit up. So I really want to hear the story behind that. Like what was about China <laughs> that made you feel like. Right. They right, said China was crazy. I've seen enough for a day. Maybe come back at a later time. Mm. I mean, I don't know if it was Shanghai or if it was China as a whole. I would say I wouldn't <laughs> classify it as China as a whole. It was more so just our experience singular. Once again, um, we we got to China on that layover. Um, we arrived to our hotel pretty late in the evening. Um, we tried to walk around our hotel and try to find some restaurants and things. And from where we was located, it just Nothing wasn't possible. Yeah. Um, so we was just wandering around in circles. Um, later that day, or later into the next day, um, after we had breakfast and uh, we was back on our feet. <laughs> we wanted to explore. So we wound up renting a t- or uh, ordering a taxi and we actually went into the city of Shanghai. We got to see some old temples and walk through the streets and things. Um, there, Jazz was actually able to get her nails done um, at an actual <laughs> <laughs> local salon. Oh, that wow. was pretty exciting. Which was kind of crazy because everything you can you can see how like demographics work and and, like I was an anthropology minor in college and so like I think of things so like culturally right and so when we're in there I'm just thinking about like how small it is right but like the average height in you know in that country or in that city is is you know nothing compared to obviously here and especially not compared to us so we get in there you know we sit down and it's like we had you know how you you try to let your niece do your nails or something like that and you sit in the small trying to <laughs> little kitty table <laughs> like, it, was, it was so small like the whole shop was teeny like literally the whole thing wow. was so small i'm like what like, I'm like this thing, and Mike's like sitting in the waiting area, like, but the waiting area is like right next to me. So, it was kind of, <laughs> so it was kind of like, uh, it, it, was, it was definitely an experience. Um, I also, when we first arrived, I actually had put a mask on because um, at the time, even though it was, it was pre-COVID, um, the pollution, obviously, in some of the surrounding cities in China um, is really bad. And so um, they they wear a mask. I had did some research that sometimes schools were even shut down because the pollution was so bad that they didn't want anybody to leave their homes. Um, so that was my first experience actually with a mask, um, which wow. <laughs> but he didn't want to wear one. I was like, I want to wear one. And then everybody else was looking at me, too. He said they were looking at us because I had a mask on, but I thought they was looking at us for something else. But, you know, <laughs> you know, I don't know if they thought we were giant or what it was. I, these big, black, beautiful giants, probably, you know, <laughs> you know, it. you know, it. I will say. I will say, looking back, that being a six three man, big beard, I, I I had a whole full full beard, and big uh, tall, beautiful queen with with long braids going down to her back, 
um, yeah, we were definitely out of the norm. Um, yeah. I would say as much as we were taking pictures and, you know, enjoying our sights, they were looking at us and like, oh, okay, <laughs> this, wow. is, this is out of the ordinary. Like, is, it, is, it, is this really real? <laughs> right. Right. So, so a lot of our guests tells us that when they go to Asia, depending on where they go, it's like people are constantly asking to touch like your hair, asking to take pictures of you, thinking you're like athletes. What was that experience like for you guys? We had that experience. It's 100 percent. We when we were actually when I was getting my nails done, um, like I said, Mike was sitting in like the waiting area, quote unquote. And uh, this guy comes, he's like walking past and he's like staring. And then he looks again and then he's staring again. And then he tries to offer Mike a cigarette because he's smoking. And he's like, hey, you want a cigarette? Mike's like, no, I'm okay. I don't smoke. He also was again. He was like, no, I don't, you know, I don't want to smoke. He was like, well, can I touch your, uh, did he ask to touch your beard? We, yeah, we, it was casual conversation once we, once I declined the cigarettes. Um, he just started to try to make small talk, yeah. um, very limited talk. Uh, because of the, <laughs> the language barrier. The language barrier. Um, but yeah, eventually it led up to, hey, can I touch your beard? And he sort of reached for it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, Before oh, he's like, <laughs> while he's asking, like yeah, while he's asking. Yeah, like it was all in one motion. Like, 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 can I, yeah. can I touch? Like, oh, hold on, what? Mm-hmm. Okay. And he, he caught the tail end of it, but it was like, hold on. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a little, uh, it caught me off guard, to say the least. To say the least. Okay. <laughs> and, and you know, again, I always consider um, every aspect. So one of the other things that we found out while we were there is that Google actually you can't use, um, at least in Shanghai, the city. Um, so a lot of their content, a lot of their social media, a lot of their internet is censored. They cannot see anything. So when they see us, it's because they really think they like what? How does this exist? Yeah. Like this is this is this is not really real because they're not like they see it every once in the blue moon. So it's like, yeah, I see it. But, you know, China's so large. I mean, for people in a small city in Shanghai to see two random, you know, you know, melanated people walking around their town by themselves without a group, you know, without a missionary church, you know, without government entities, you know, just by themselves, just roaming around touring then that, that's that's a bit shocking. Um, yeah. Because like Mike said, once we got off the taxi, we were pretty much on foot for the rest of the time until until we got back in the taxi to go back to the hotel. So That's really um, mature. Um, that's a very mature perspective to try to see their sides of it rather than be offended or annoyed, like to see the perspective of the people that are in that culture and know mm-hmm. that they are censored so they don't even get to view people like us. That's really, I, just, I think that's really mature. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest takeaways for me with travel now. Like before I got into anthropology, I was traveling for fun. And mm-hmm. then now I realized so much, like even with watching 90 Day Fiance, I don't know if anybody watching 90 Day Fiance. It's yeah. my favorite show. I love it. I, watch, <laughs> I love it so much. But like you learn even culturally about certain things. Like you learn mannerisms, you know, mm-hmm. you learn so many different things. and and that when you travel, you learn even more about those different cultures. Um, yeah. And so that was something that we didn't know. Um, we were thinking about simple things like the charger piece and what charger piece they take in China so that we can make sure our stuff is charged. Uh-huh. We're not worried about whether or not they never seen us before. That's not something, you know, we were even thinking about. So right. why even get upset at the fact that they were shocked? I mean, it is what it is. If it's genuine, if it's not genuine, I, I mean, I don't care. I'm here to have fun. So... That's right. Awesome. That's a great perspective. That's an amazing definitely. perspective. Yeah, definitely. And and so with, with that being said, like what inspires you both to travel? Right. Like you said, you like animals, um, anthropology, but like what really gets food you was in there, too. Some quick, some quick yeah, meals were in yeah. there, too. So it definitely gets you guys excited about travel. For the most part, um, Jazz sort of hit the nail on the head is just uh, seeing new things, experiencing new cultures. Um, for me, I'm, I'm the more adventurous one. So I'm usually the one that say, hey, let's ditch the tour guide and let's go figure out, you know, eat local food or, you know, check out local attractions in the area. Um, so in that in that aspect, we get to interact with the actual town folk or actual uh, culture and heritage of the locations that we're traveling to. Um, And that's one of our biggest takeaways is that we can then come back home 
and bring some of those ideas and just implement them back into our relationship or educate our friends and family about what we have seen and what we have done. Um, I would say the biggest thing that inspires me is, um, is definitely probably, um, just like, like where I've been, like, I feel like I've had so many, um, like light bulbs kind of go off in my head when either I'm traveling, when I get ready to travel, when I research travel and or when I get to a different place like that. I mean, America is so small, like there's literally like, I mean, and, and, it, and it's so complicated, right? Like United States of America is like, you know, we're a melting pot, you know, we have all these, new, you know, home of the land, land of the free or whatever we're called or whatever. Um, but it's just so small. And so um, I'm really inspired by like the experiences that I've had and I would like to continue to have, um, I guess you could say. Okay. Now, do y'all happen to do y'all happen to have like maybe a top five places or a bucket list of places y'all want to visit? Yeah, I do. We do. We do. <laughs> he can get. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. So, um, like I said, I'm a travel agent. So last year, um, I went on a trip with my girlfriends. They were like, "Why don't you just become a travel agent? Because you're always planning trips." And I was like, "You know what?" All right, let's do it. Um, and so that kind of like, it just took off after that. Like we were already traveling before that and it just kind of took off. So um, I would definitely say top five for me um, is I need to get back to the motherland. So there's two locations that I have to get to in the motherland. That's Morocco, Tanzania. Um, and then I also want to, um, I do want to hit a UAE country. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, I don't, 100% want to do Dubai. Um, we've been talking about that. We're not sure yet. Um, but a UAE country. Um, and then we also, once the world opens back up, we want to do Bali. Um, and then um, we, I really, 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 really want to do Australia. So wherever that be in Australia, I really want to do Australia. When we were in Thailand, we actually met some friends in Australia that we still keep in contact with. Um, and they're supposed to be getting, getting married after the pandemic, whenever that happens. So. <laughs> I have a question for you guys. Um, out of all, uh, all the places that you've been and preparing to go and actually the journey, what have you learned about each other through traveling? Um, I can go first on that one too. Sorry. Mm. I didn't even <laughs> I'm, I'm an Aquarius, by the way. If, if anybody knows anything about Zodiacs. I don't, but apparently like I act like an Aquarius. But um okay. <laughs> he is definitely an observer. Um, I will absolutely say that. I feel like I'm the type of person that's just kind of like let's kind of do whatever. Um okay. and he's an observer, even when we go to like resorts and stuff like that, where we're pretty much on the resort the whole time as opposed to like, you know, when you stay in the city and you don't have all inclusive and stuff like that. Um, but I've definitely learned that he is very much an observer for sure. Okay. Mike, what have you learned about Jasmine through your travels? Through our travels, um, communication is key. Um, I've learned that she is very well articulate and well-spoken in not only English, Spanish, and many other languages. <laughs> um, <laughs> as, we, as she said, um, usually when we go out, um, I'm usually the more adventurous one, wanting to explore, wanting to look around and get my sights together. But I definitely need her right by my side because she is the outgoing one. She's my social Aww. butterfly. Love that. Um, so she's going to spark up the conversation and sort of, you know, just probe people or just get to know someone very genuinely um, yeah. as to where me, um, it would be a little bit more difficult um, or a little bit more uh, challenging where jazz is much more outgoing and um, yeah, travel no matter, once again, no matter who she interacting with, um, she she's just perfect in the way that she does it. Aww. Aww. Oh, that's Aww. so sweet. 
And this is black love here. Look, my man has confessed his love for his queen. Love I know. Love. You know. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Honestly, here. So, <laughs> y'all ain't right, so, but Mike, tell us the truth. Tell country. us about a tell us about an argument you guys got into on vacation. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll take this one. I'll take this one. I'll take this one. Right, 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 right. Okay. I'm going to bring up Cancun. The behind, oh, the, the, scene, the behind the scenes. Behind, let's go a little to it. <laughs> okay, we talk a little bit more about too because the resort that we stayed at is actually adults only and it's topless optional. I don't know if um, you guys have had experience with that, but... Um, Not you know, yet, but we will. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, to your question, an argument that we had, uh, we was at we was in Cancun Temptations Resort. Mm-hmm. Check it out. I love Temptations. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had to take a sip. Jasmine had to take a sip on that one. By temptations because everybody there has their name on their cups. <laughs> so it was like, oh. it was like we were our names on our cups. So I'm ready. Can we go? I'm, I'm yes. ready. I gotta, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. Exactly. So nobody has to ask you your name. Right. So um, the argument, uh, I would say Temptations being all-inclusive, the whiskey and Coke got the best of me, um, (laughs) took advantage of the tequila one night. (laughs) Um, And it was a heated argument. Um, We got into a very, very long-winded discussion that turned into an argument. Um, ultimately we started going back and forth and back and forth and I just wouldn't let it go. We, we could not compromise or come eye to eye. Um, and one of her trigger points is when I actually am t- tired of a conversation, I'll just walk away. I'm, I'm over it. Just, just done. Um, and I actually did that, right. Not thinking of the situation, right. I just was like to hell with it all. And I walked out. And it eventually led to a fight outside of our room, more arguing, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And we had to come together. Like, once we calmed down, it was like, hold up, babe. Like, this is not us, right? We actually put on a public public display. Like, this is, we are so far out of character. We paid a couple of hours. We talked about that, too. It was like, we paid a couple of hours. I don't know, you know. We're going to waste that right now. Yeah. We might have to just suck it up. Because, right, oh, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so ultimately, it, it we wound up working it out uh, by going back into the to the bedroom, um, continuing our conversation behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. Um, the bedroom, y'all see where he tried to get <laughs> exit. Right, right, but that's where you work it out. Y'all see? <laughs> it was back behind some closed doors. <laughs> um, and, you know, it wasn't beautiful that night. <laughs> um, definitely had to go into the next day, uh, you know, apologizing and, you know, working it out, smoothing over the yeah. process outside. Um, and ultimately, luckily, we were still able to come back together um, and still enjoy the rest of our vacation. It happened like smack that middle. So mm-hmm. we did some excursions together and, um, you know, spent some real quality time, stopped focusing on all that was going on in the resort and around us and sort of brought it back together. And mm-hmm. that really did help okay. us. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, and that's a great recovery. Because right? yeah. things like that happen a lot. And um, this actually brings me to my next area of questioning, like traveling while black, right? Um, you mentioned the whole China thing and, you know, um, moving around the United States, you know, traveling while black, a lot of the times we're expected to kind of represent the entire race, right? Mm -hmm. But what has traveling while black been for you both individually as travelers, whether it be domestic or international? And what did that look like as you guys are now starting to see more of the world together? Um, so I definitely feel like that question is, um, it's explosive in the sense that it definitely depends on where, um, I know, um, I've been a couple of more places than Mike has been. So I've been to South Africa without him. I've been to the Dominican Republic without him. I've also been to Europe and Spain without him. So um, like in considering those places, so specifically for South Africa, because I know that a lot of people um, think of the motherland and they automatically think that like, you know, melanated people, we 
um, that's our place. That's where we should be. Um, and I'm not saying that it's not, but I think um, traveling while Black is specifically more so your spirit. And I say that, and really, like I said, because you know, I've been repeating it over and over again, coming from an anthropological uh, perspective. Like a lot of people will even say to us, you know, how are you going to this place? It's not safe. And, you know, what are you going to, you know, there, there's this going on, there's this going on. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, I'm thinking positive. I have like, there's no reason for me to think that something is going to happen. If it happens, it happens. Like maybe I'll, you know, I am, I am, obviously going to be prepared for that. Um, but I think traveling while Black is the same as living while Black, to be honest, because anything can happen, right? Like we can be in a situation where, you know, we are being marginalized and we are being uh, targeted, right? But we can also be in a situation where we're being praised and where we're yeah. being you know, uplifted. And so it really depends on where you go, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say all that to say when I was in South Africa, I actually went with a class full of white people. My tour guides were white people. And on top of that, my drivers got arrested for stealing while we were there. OK, oh my, goodness. my white oh, wow. Caucasian drivers got arrested in South Africa for stealing <laughs> beer from a bar. I'm like. Out of all things to happen, um, this is what happened. So I was the only black student in my class. Um, it was a field studies course. So I basically studied the big game five. Um, and that was pretty much why most of our game drivers. So a game drive is <clears throat> basically where, <coughs> excuse me, you go through a natural reserve and you look for like live game um, and game, not meaning like you hunt them, their game because their game because they're they are wild and they don't want you know people to poach them and stuff like that so they have like parameters basically where they keep it's not like a zoo um it's like miles and miles well kilometers because they use kilometers 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 of land that they they allow them to kind of roam around in so they can make sure that they they aren't getting um hunted and killed Mm. um but yeah that you know with the game drives and all those things like that um with it like all those people were our color um and then like i said my class and my drivers they were they were caucasian so you know if you guys know any history about apartheid and you know how that all worked as well um that kind of played a factor into what i experienced while i was there and had i not taken the anthropology of africa and had i not looked up a lot of stuff about nelson mandela had i not did the research and the and you know kind of just educated myself before i went um and maybe i would have uh been surprised because um, I think a lot of people were surprised that like, when I got posted pictures or when I show my time there, a lot of them don't include melanated people because, you know, they weren't there with me. A lot of people didn't want to go. Um, so. Mm-hmm. And then what has, what has your experience been since you've been traveling with Mike? Um, since I've been traveling with Mike, um, China was, was one of the experiences. What? Rico, I also felt like we had a weird experience. Um, And, you know, being in, you know, like you talked about Indiana and and Pittsburgh, um, you know, one of the townships in Indiana is called White Township. And it's also, you know, has potential high levels of, you know, racism and and, um, microaggressions that exist um, within its hierarchy and institutions and stuff like that. Um, So I definitely think that um, it, it varies. I mean, um, a lot of the times too, I think we've learned that like, um, and it might pick up on this actually, um, that's why he said about the languages. Um, if we try to like learn their language or even like their dialect, because I speak Spanish, but at a very low level, but I try to enunciate how they speak. Like I try to use their dialect. I try to use, you know, the pronunciations. I'm not just like reading a word you know, when I read it, like I try to roll my R's, if, you know, if it's, if it's supposed to be rolled, you know what I mean? So yeah. um, sometimes they appreciate you actually, the effort. yeah, the effort, effort, yeah, the of, effort. You, of you going the extra mile, you know, to try to, they turn around, they're like, huh? Like, you don't know what you just said, but you definitely just tried. I know that yeah. verb, but you didn't, <laughs> you didn't say it in the right sense. You didn't say I did. You said you did, but it's okay. You said, you said did, and that's all that matters. <laughs> right. You know? Um. So, yeah. Mike? Yeah, I'll say since traveling with Jazz, um, 
she touched on some wonderful points. Um, it's been, China was our most unique experience, um, but we, after doing our research and hearing some reviews, it wasn't far-fetched. Um, for the most part, it's pretty pretty easygoing, um, especially when you understand the the culture or the people that you're interacting with. Um, definitely putting in that effort and um, you know just trying to keep that that line of communication open. And yeah, they'll definitely respect the culture that you're you're putting forth to them as well. Um, it's very it's a very mutual experience. Um, and it's been very easy going with Jazz here with me as well. Okay. Look, Mike, blink um, twice if you're in danger, all right? Because you keep giving Jazz all these compliments. I just want to make sure you're okay, okay, brother? Mike, keep doing it. Maybe some, maybe some of what you're doing will rub off on Paige. So you keep, you keep doing that. <laughs> well, it's really because um, this, is, this, is my, uh, this is my craft, right? Like travel is my craft. Um, yeah. he, he went to school for engineering. Um, he's a numbers guy. He's a stockbroker. You know, he's said he worked in finance. Like, you know, that's what he does. So, um, kind of now on page, like I, when I present a trip to him, I literally, and Jackie, I have to be like, babe, this is, you know, budget. The only trip that we really haven't, like I had to present the numbers to him was probably the most re- recent one with Costa Rica. Cause yeah. um, he had so much time to be able to take off cause it was over Thanksgiving break. So we kind of were just like, eh, we're just gonna, you know, kind of rock out. And then also we found a, some cheaper flights. So he was kind of like, you know, I'm not really worried about, um, you know, how much we're going to spend when we're out there. So. But yeah, he's 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 definitely like a more technical like yeah. numbers guy and guy and and you know he he loves to travel with me and I think I like see him light up when we travel and that's why I I feel like honestly like as a as his queen um, I feel like I'm building him up by you know presenting him these trips because. I, he literally lights up like a kid in the candy store when we get there. He may give me a hard time when I'm like, let's go on another trip after we just came back, you know, three weeks ago. <laughs> but once he's there, he's like, woo, yes, fun. Like he said, like he'll, yeah. he'll leave me. I'll be jet lagged. I'll be knocked out, y'all. Knocked out. And he will be like, Let's go. I'm going to explore. I'll be back. He'll come back in 10 minutes. Are you okay? Do you want to come out? I'm like, no, I'm so tired. He'll go out, explore the hotel, explore the different um, things, opportunities that we can, um, you know, have while we're there that I didn't Uh already love, you know, at the resort and stuff like that, where all the bathrooms and the cameras are and all the pools and the books. Like, he's just, you know, he's he's really Why do you want to know where the camera's at, Mike? What you trying to (laughs) get? You know why he want to know. (laughs) <laughs> just got to know my surroundings <laughs> got you got you so so you guys you guys touch on a lot um especially pre-pandemic experiences like what does your new normal look like now that you're a travel agent now you got to move around a little different and you know you can't be as spontaneous as you used to want to be like what does that look like for you guys now yeah what's changed for you um, I'll say the biggest thing, obviously, is the testing aspect. Um, the so the first year of the pandemic, I took eight flights um, before the vaccine and testing requirements kind of really started to emerge. Um, and we had went to, we went to Mexico twice during that period, mm-hmm. and the testing requirement was not a part of, you know, the whole grand scheme of things um, yet. So I think the biggest thing right now is is, is really the testing requirement. Okay. Um, and I will also say that, like, the new normal is not really being able to do things like the day of, because um, especially with, like, recently, um, I'm, you know, you know, not to throw anything out there, but me and him are not vaccinated. And so we try to advocate for people that also don't want to be vaccinated and also don't want to travel as well. Um, and we've actually found in our experience that um, it really doesn't matter because a lot of the places are requiring a negative test. So regardless of your vaccination status, you need to present negative testing. And so um, in the U.S., we've had 
mostly free experiences, either CVS, Rite Aid. Um, you also can have your doctor send out for a referral for you if you let them know that you're going on a trip, depending on who your doctor is. Um, and then on the return flight, most of our experience has been testing at the airport. But there's also accommodations at your resort. A lot of the all-inclusive destinations are offering on-site um, COVID testing. We even, at Temptations, they actually offered it as long as you stayed at least three nights, I think. We went to two nights. Um, and, and, um, and then some of them charge, um, especially internationally. But we actually just recently found out, which we're probably going to try to submit for probably either on our taxes or um, we're going to um, talk to our insurance about depending on the end of the year, how much we have left. Um, but we can be actually be reimbursed um, for the amount that you pay for your COVID testing abroad um, because obviously they're out of out of network, like they're completely out of network um, and you have medical insurance. So, um, you know, if it's something medical related and, and they cover it, something like a COVID test, which is typically what they cover, they cover it in the U.S., but they just can't send the money all the way to, you know, South Africa. So um, you just want to, you know, um, check into that. Like we, we, we've been looking a little bit into that as well. So um, really just like the testing requirement. And with that, um, I haven't had too many like delays in experience because of it. Um, I know I've been hearing a lot about people having delays in experience. Um, and I guess my biggest recommendation, especially now that I'm an agent um, and even post, uh, I mean, pre me being an agent and, and pre pandemic travel insurance. I mean, it's an extra 50 to 100 bucks and, you know, you're you're covered. Um, and, and that's just it, pretty much. Um, Costa Rica actually only required that you get medical insurance because they wanted to make sure that if you got stuck there, you, you could cover your hotel expenses. So that's all. They didn't require no test, no vaccine, no nothing. They just wanted you to have medical insurance that covered you up to $50,000 in case you had to go to the hospital, in case you had to, you know, purchase a hotel. And I mean, you know, we was going to stay at somewhere that was good because I don't know. Um, lots of people testing positive with no symptoms. So I just want to, you know, make sure that it's, you know, can we pick where we stay? Because I don't know. If I got a quarantine right. and stay away, I might not be too mad. <laughs> <laughs> I can stay away from America for ten more days. It might not hurt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So you're 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 actually walking into the next st- stage, right? Is tips, right? Like yeah. make sure you figure out where you're going. Um, because throughout this this um episode, you guys hit on a lot of things, right? At least be be mindful of where you're going. Learn the culture. Um, mm-hmm. at least try to learn the language. Um, understand the COVID requirements for your locations, right? Mm-hmm. Given the new mm-hmm. norm, like what are some tips that you would give a newbie traveler that's trying to tip their dip their toe into the travel travel? Um, research is king. Yeah, um, definitely, good. definitely. You know, from looking into the resort or the hotel or whatever, wherever you're resting at. Um, look into your accommodations. Look how you're going to get to those accommodations. Um, if you plan on doing any excursions or sightseeing, you know, look into all of that. Um, having a very detailed itinerary helps helps us a lot. Um, just to start us off, um, I would also say, um, you know, kind of to, to, to piggyback off of that, um, when you do your research, um, try to find. Um, people on social media and you know in my experience I found that like a lot of um, the tour guides that we've recently had like our tour guide in, in Brazil we went to a small town called Jerry Coquara everybody that goes to Brazil typically goes to Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo um, and even sometimes like your bigger cities like Fortaleza or stuff like that but we had to fly into Fortaleza and then we drove four and a half hours to Jerry Coquara but um, I found my tour guide on Instagram and um, another one of our travel advisors had also found him on Instagram um, and his pictures are, I mean, are amazing. And you would think this little town, like, how do they have service? How do they like is um, like the way of living again is, you know, it's so simple, um, but yet so elegant in, in a sense. So I definitely would say um, definitely utilize social media and utilize certain like platforms because, you know, a lot of these things are not trustworthy. Like sometimes um, you want to look at reviews 
Always, always, always. Please read reviews. Read uh, my biggest tip when reading reviews, always go to the reviews and look up the most recent. Because if there hasn't been any reviews within the last six to seven months, I don't know how to feel about that place. Right. Um, some mm-hmm. might be up. Some something might be up. So um, that that's a, a big tip. Um, and then my my three biggest tips just for travel in general are purchase travel insurance. I already said that. Mm-hmm. The second thing is if you're looking to do it consistently, get a travel credit card. I don't care what your credit look like. Um, it's just smart. It, it is what it is. I mean, you 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 get the travel credit card. You use the travel credit card. You get miles. I mean, um, my my first travel credit card. I went on a trip with my girlfriends, and I put the whole Airbnb in my name. They gave me the cash, so they were paying my my credit card bill, right? Like I didn't even really have to pay it. I just had to pay my third of whatever I had to pay, and essentially, that's not even what my bill was, right? Like with a credit card, you're supposed to keep it under thirty percent. Some people like to zero it out, but again. You want to keep the usage a little bit just so that they know that you're still activating your credit cycle. Um, And then the third thing um, is to keep a travel savings because um, I um, like a lot of people will be like, I can't travel. Right. And um, even like Mike used to be like that sometimes, like, how are we going to travel with this? I mean, when we went to Canada, um, we had just bought our house less than three weeks ago. I lost my job a month ago. He was like, babe, we're not going to get this done. I said, you know why we are? Because I have a travel savings specifically (laughs) for travel and it ain't used for nothing else but travel. So we're going to do this trip because I saved all these coins for my travel and everything else for our house, for our car, for everything else is taken care of because I didn't focus on that. I literally, and that's what I do. I divide and conquer. I do the tip for two challenge. I put $20 to the side. I put $50 to the side for a travel specifically so that if I see a flight that's, you know, a couple of dollars, I can book it. I don't have to worry about what I'm looking at my next paycheck so that I can, you know, book this flight because then the price might go up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that, that, that's my, my three biggest tip. Travel insurance, um, travel credit card, and travel savings. So... Okay. Jasmine, there was a couple of things in there that we haven't heard before that I, I just want to highlight. And one is using social media as a tool, because we always talk yeah. about how mm-hmm. social media is this horrible place where people get sucked in mm-hmm. and we lose a lot of hours. But if we're using it correctly, it can be a really big advantage for us. So mm-hmm. looking at stuff mm-hmm. on you know IG, Facebook of people who have done it already so that mm-hmm. you can get an understanding and then reading reviews, like actual reviews of the place so that you can understand what the experience is like. And that was key. What you said about if there's not a review in the past six or seven months, there's probably something wrong or you don't want to be the one to get the bad experience. So you have to write that next review. I yeah. actually had a client where I went to go book her trip and I thought something was weird. Um, when I went to go book her trip. So mm-hmm. then I click submit and it wouldn't go through. I called the airlines. Meanwhile, the hotel is closed. Mm. But they're allowing me to book it online. You see what I'm saying? They're allowing yeah. me to at least go through the steps. But then when I tried to process it, it wouldn't go through. Right. You know what I right. mean? So it's just like, that's still a hoax because I already presented her with this quote for this specific hotel because they said that it was you know it, it, it you know it was available to book yeah. so and, and, the, and this these are on platforms that you know are reliable sources to me so it's not even and i like when i went, went through the reviews after i saw that i saw all these people that said they're closed they're closed when i got there they tried to book me at their sister hotel um yeah. they wound up taking 30, 90 days to give me my refund because they're closed like and i was like wow like you know, so that was an experience that like immediately, like I said, turned that light bulb on in my head and was like, this is how you from now on, this is how you need to move. You have to move yeah. that way. That's and a learning experience really, and yeah. it changes your habits. Yeah. 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 And then other thing you said about saving for travel. And here's where we get. See, you said you were buying a house. You lost your job. All these other things happened. And you said I don't care. I have a travel savings and I'm going on that trip. So that is yet another example of when you hear the excuses of I can't afford it. That's just an excuse. You prioritize what you want to do. If travel is important to you, then you will maneuver things around so that you can travel. And even if it's not top priority, if it's second Mm -hmm. or third, 
Um, you you can still will make it happen. It. Like I am 100% like, I am 100% a firm um, advocate for like financial well-being, whatever circumstance that you're in. I mean, you can be making minimum wage, you can be making $100,000 a year. I don't care. And Mike will tell you this. Um, if if you want something, you'll work for it, right? Like you'll we all, we'll, we'll all, you know, work for it. And, and that's, it is what it is. We have prepared for our house. We already have the money for that. Like, why are we worried about that? We have prepared yeah. for, you know, our expenses up to, if we were to lose our job for a certain amount of time, he was still working. I was fine. I had a part-time job. You know, it's, it's not like the world was over, right? Like it, it was fine. And we, we still made it. And, you know, we two years, two and a half years into our house, never missed the mortgage payment, still went on several trips this year, you know, so it's not even, you know, like we just have to like think about it, do it and then execute. That's yeah. pretty much like what it's saying. And it sounds simple, but then it's like, you know, I started to like beat myself up about it, too, because I used to always think that like I needed money for it because I didn't I didn't have my first travel credit card until last year. Um, mm-hmm. And that's where I really messed up because I could have had a lot, probably more trips by now if I had a trip <laughs> for, for last year. But the miles and the, I mean, the hotel rewards and I mean, just everything. I just, I could have had so, so much more, um, you know, if I would have had a travel credit card. But you you live, you learn. Yeah. Um, and had that travel savings. If you got to do the 52 week challenge and I just told, I just talked to somebody about the 52 week challenge and they said you should do it backwards instead next year and see how it works. And mm. the 52 week challenge is $1,300 at the end of the year. That's the whole trip. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a whole trip. Yeah. That might even be a trip for two people. When we went to Brazil, I paid $1,200 mm. for our original um, room and flight, but then we added a couple more days to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, a little extension. Yeah, um, yeah. We had a couple more days to it, and we actually had to stay in like um, uh, an expensive place for one night because our other hotel was not, not opening up. So we mm. paid a pretty penny for the one hotel, but before that, we were only going to spend six hundred dollars a piece, and that's I mean that's pretty affordable, I think, to go right. to Brazil. No, right? it is. It um, is. So oh, yeah, that's really that's a really decent price. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. you guys you guys that, dropping jewels like crazy today. yeah yeah mm-hmm. on top of that like this is why i also appreciate mike like he's also very level-headed i'm crazy outgoing like he just told y'all um but when we when stuff happens like he's just always finding a way to make it better yeah um when we went to brazil just to throw out an example we went to brazil um our one of our flights got canceled so we wound up having a nine-hour layover in sao paulo and I am livid. I'm like, I want to get to Rio. We got this and that to do. I don't yeah. want to do this and do that. He's like, let's book a spa, babe. He found a uh, spa. We booked the spa for all day, an all day um, spa. All day um, so they allowed us to sit in the hot tub. They had wine and fruit and grapes and everything. Then we sat through about a two hour massage. Um, we went, ate lunch in Sao Paulo. Went back to the airport and then went to Rio. It was amazing. I was like, Yeah, I, I like that. Like, we got to see one more place, right? And like, when y'all got to Rio, Mike, Mike was happy, weren't you, Mike? Uh huh, yeah, buddy. My man know how to lay up that sis. <laughs> <laughs> I always believe in just making the best of, of your experience. So, yeah, yeah. optimism <laughs> shine bright, um, right. No point in just sitting in the airport for nine, ten hours. So why not get out right. and explore? And, and the thing is, and I like right. the way you guys are yang to each other's yang. Like, you know, one person gets excited as all. Well. The other person's got to be able to bring that energy down. Because, and be like, look, babe, it's not that serious. Yeah. We could, we could spend a couple hours outside of the airport. Let's go come back and then we'll keep it moving. Mm-hmm. So with that said, oh, man, I really appreciate y'all and everything that y'all shared. Like, tell us what you guys got going on. Where can people find you? Like, you know, all of those tips. Plus, hit up Jazz if you need an agent. I'm just saying. Right, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so tell us where we, where we so, can find you and what you got going on. Got you. Um, so I am, my travel page is TGI underscore J-O. So that's J-A-Y-O-H is also on my cup. Also sponsored by Mike himself. Thank you, sweetheart. I really appreciate you. 
Well, you're so sweet. He bought these for our last trip um, because he didn't want us to be like everybody else without having our names on, on it. Um, J.O. actually started in high school because there was a lot of people whose name was Jasmine. Um, and then when I started with, um, I actually worked with an organization called Travel Goddess International. Um, CEO is Natasha Wilson. Um, shout out to Travel Goddess. Shout out to Tosh. Um, she the best. Um, and um, she basically started a platform where um, we can go through a travel advisor academy. And I mean, she has it set up. Um, so we have um, we have a few things. We have our travel advisor academy. So you can sign up to be an agent if you want to start getting, you know, a couple extra dollars on the side. Um, we also have um, our consultations, um, which if you would like to hire me to be a travel agent, um, you can book our consultation. Um, we have a, a um, I think we have about seven different consultations that you can sign up for. So it depends on how many people are in your group. If you need passport assistance, if you want a, a personalized itinerary, um, you know, it, it really kind of varies depending on which one you would like to book. We also have our travel guide is marketplace, um, which has all things travel. So we have some swimwear on there. We also sell some itineraries on there and um, some paraphernalia and things like that. Um, and then we also have our travel guide is community. So our travel goddess community, you can either sign up for a free membership or a $7 membership. Um, and basically it's just a, a group and a platform of like-minded people who like to travel as well, kind of laying out their, their different experiences, their different ideas, asking questions. We also have a host of different travel deals and exclusive travel deals for um, TGI members. Um, and that's who I'm a part of. You can also follow me at an alternative ego. There's underscores in between each word. Sorry, I got a lot to say because I'm, I'm a lot to say person. Um, that's my <laughs> personal page. Uh, we are an adults only ex include uh, adult only um couple that travels as well so like i said um stay tuned we actually have um, a nude resort that we're intending to visit um coming up um we've also visited some topless optional resorts um and there's also one opening up in miches which is in dominican republic soon um so we're really looking to to, to, to dive into like i guess you can say like the spiritual like down to earth world of like adults only travel um but yeah that's where you can find me um i don't know so mike's not really a social media guy but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for me, I, I'll be around. I'm on Instagram. You can find me, BLP, underscore, Mike Check, 215. Um, yeah, every all of our posts, we always put up everything for our trips, our excursions, um, just dinners and dates and things. Um, we love to talk about travel. Um, and any questions, we definitely feel free to hit us up. Nice. Well, that's thank another you thing. Both. We are always open to answer questions. Please, 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 please. If you have any questions, like game is free, y'all. I mean, even the financial game, game um, yeah. travel game, it's all free. Like I don't charge for that. You know, if you have a question, and, hit me up. And that's um, the thanks. that's the cool thing about a lot of the social media heads, right? That that's in travel. A lot of them are open to sharing travel tips. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, like you said, game is free. I mean, I know, um, I think everybody watched said tripping, right? And I love actually, said. Yeah. And he actually posts stuff where, you know, he'll tell you how he goes about these trips. So, you know, he has these lavish trips, but he's actually always open to sharing that as well. So don't yeah. think because this person's a social media conglomerate or what might have you that they're like closed minded with the, with the messages or with the stories, they'll definitely help. So I, I want to thank you guys for really Super jumping cool. on and doing this. And like I said, I really appreciate it.